Thanks for joining us um, to celebrate the accomplishments of 15 University of Mississippi students who participated in this program in New York, D.C. and Atlanta this past year. I want to first introduce the cohort, the 2019 cohort. In Atlanta, we had Diamond Brown from Psychology, Diane Lim from Banking and Finance and Managerial Finance, Lillian Salem from Business and with a Management Emphasis, and she is actually a student from our Tupelo Regional Campus. Then in New York, Morgan Cofield from Accountancy, um, DeJore Fox, um, Business with an Entrepreneurship Emphasis, Claire Hausman, English and History, um, three students from Integrated Marketing and Communications in New York, Amanda Hirschfield, Rachel Long, and Avery White. Uh, Washington, D.C., we had William Bartell, Public Policy Leadership, Jacob Davis from Journalism, um, Austin Fiala, Public Policy Leadership, Cindy Wen, History, Caroline Tankersley, Political Science, and Grace Mormon was a spring intern in Washington in Art History. So help me congratulate all these students and their achievements this summer and spring. In addition to the work of the students, I must thank the faculty who work with the students in earning UM credit in various academic departments. Dr. Danielle Amador in the School of Business, Dr. Chris Belden Adams in the Department of Art and Art History, Dr. Mark Chen, Department of Public Policy Leadership, Dr. Alexandra Lindgren Gibson in the Department of History, Dr. Uh, Mr. Rivers Myers in the School of Journalism and New Media. Dr. Sue Ann Skipworth in the Department of Political Science, and Dr. Caroline Wiginton in the Department of English. And finally, I want to give much thanks to my colleagues in the internship experience, Gabby Coggin, coordinator of the internship experience, and Dr. Christina Phillips, the assistant director of college programs, and to Dr. Tony Amador, the associate provost and director of outreach. His support for the internship experience is critical um, to our mission. So there are two quick elements um, to the UM internship experience that I'd like to briefly highlight today. Um, and interestingly, we were just in a session with Dr. Bob Cummings about um, one of these, but that is, those are reflection and acknowledgement. These are two of the eight best practices that, the, uh, that are outlined by the National Society of Experiential Education, which is our professional association for this type of work. Reflection is the element that transforms simple experience to learning experience. And this is where critical thinking takes place. In this program, we and our students practice continuous reflection. It occurs during the interview process when students meet with a panel of faculty, staff, and students to discuss their academic majors and their professional aspirations. It occurs in the internship exploration and preparation classes where we ask students to reflect on class activities and events, thinking about what they've learned and assessing how to, where they can make improvements. And then it also occurs during the internship experience itself, when they communicate with Gabby throughout the summer um, or throughout their term, whether it's to process workplace challenges or whether it's to share their accomplishments. Reflection happens in class, after alumni receptions, over dinner, in journals, and formal written reflections. And we're pleased to have partnered with the School of Education in creating a series of three one-credit courses that help facilitate this learning. So reflection is really where the learning happens. The second part is acknowledgement. The NSEE says all parties to the experience should be included in recognition of progress and accomplishment. Celebration of learning and impact to help provide closure and sustainability for the experience. A few years ago, we initiated this student presentation event um, as a way to acknowledge our many partners um, in this program and also to celebrate our students' accomplishments. So we thank you all again for your contributions Thank you for being here, and now it's time to celebrate. So today we celebrate the accomplishments of all of our participants, over 120 since the inception of the program, and you'll be hearing from five of our most recent interns this afternoon. Um, we're so happy that they've agreed to share their experiences with you. So thank you again for being here, and now I would like to introduce Dr. Noel Wilkin, Provost and Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. So good afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to be brief, but I want to challenge you to think about a couple of things before as you go into your presentations and also as you reflect upon the internship experiences that you had. First of all, 
I think you've all helped us to do something that's critically important to us. One of my goals is to have engaging experiences for all of our students. And so these internships are clearly that. They help students have engaging experiences with people in fields, in industries, in the real world uh, that can do something that we can't do within our traditional classrooms. Things that help you to understand the world in new and different ways. The other thing that is, it, it helped you to do is push yourself a little bit farther uh, beyond what you normally would do in the classroom. And getting outside of that comfort zone is critical for being able to get the fullness out of experience and make the maximum use of your knowledge. So that, again, I would celebrate that and say this is something that you should take away and, and that should give you pride that you were actually able to do that and push yourself to experience something you've never experienced before. The other, the other fact I want to focus on or perspective I want to focus on is how this influenced the way you think and how this influenced your cognitive structures about the world. As you go through your experiences, particularly an internship experience like this, you're creating a neural network. You're creating a network of feelings and, and engagements and, and interactions and knowledge and ability that you're not going to get sitting in a classroom learning from an instructor or working in a small group with another group of students. You're creating this neural network of, of ideas and feelings and knowledge and ability that will be used in later life. And they will be used with or without your knowledge. There's so many things that we do in life that are hardwired. So many things that we do that I think it's been, now I'm, I'm treading on dangerous ground with a psychologist in the room. Uh, but I will say that um, 80, it's been rumored that, eight, or, or believe that 80% of what we do and, and what our bodies do and how we act is hardwired. That we do these things without thinking about them. The way we move, the way we write, the way we eat, the way we drive, things are hardwired and, and we do them without thinking about them. And so in order for you to be good at something in your life, you've got to repeat experiences over and over and do things over and over so that you're hardwiring the actions, the interactions, the engagements, and how you function in a way that helps to make you productive. That's tough to do sitting in a classroom, sitting in a seat. It's easier to do as you start those internship experiences sooner, and, and you all have, are getting the advantages and benefits of that. So you've also uh, populated your minds with incredible experiences, as I said. And neuroscientists have said that our brains will seek the path of least resistance to solutions. And so if you think about that, you're not only creating more efficient paths of least resistance to arriving at so you can be more effective in your jobs and in your roles and in life. But you're also populating with lots of experience that lie in your minds in a way that you can activate them when you need to get off that path of least resistance. An artist once said that artists create the world that doesn't exist yet. They actually make something that no one's ever made before. Or they make something in a way that nobody's had that perspective. And our scientists are doing the same things. In your jobs and in the roles that you'll have within society, you will often need to get off the path of least resistance in order to experience or utilize creativity to come up with solutions. And when you do that, getting off that path of least resistance, the more things that you're able to pull into that cognitive process, the more things that that pathway bumps into along the way to a new solution, the better off you're going to be, the more creative you're going to be, the more able you're going to be to come up with solutions that other, others have not thought of. And so that's feelings, that's knowledge, that's ability. A great architect, Bjork Bing, uh, Engel, said, creativity is the power to imagine the world that isn't our world yet. And uh, there's also an author, um, a, uh, a psychologist, who have said that creativity is not about waiting for lightning to strike or muse to whisper the ne next great idea into our ear. It's about getting out in the world, using what's around us to generate new concepts, new designs, and new perspectives. So it's this idea of if you don't have anything for your brain to bump into, if you don't have anything that you've populated your mind with, then you're limiting your creativity. And so I also want to say, you've and celebrate, you've taken this opportunity to do that. You've taken this opportunity to start to feel new things, experience new things, and start to populate your minds in that way. Finally. I would be remiss if I didn't say on today's 9-11 anniversary that we need to remember that freedom is not free. 
and that the world, in a world where people are imprisoned because of their beliefs, they're imprisoned because of their ideas, their ethnicities, and other things, we need to, as Americans, we need to, as humans, take pride in the fact of the freedom, or take or, or hold the freedoms that we have precious. And we may not take the abilities that we're afforded and the opportunities we're afforded as a result of that freedom for granted. And so I'm encouraging you all today, in particular, to make the most of that freedom and use your talent to make it a better world for everybody. Thank you for putting yourself out there. Thank you for agreeing to have the courage to come up and tell us about your experience. Again, something that you will benefit from because you're hardwiring what it takes to do that. And thanks to everybody who's turned out to hear what you have to say. Good afternoon, my name is Diamond Brown. I'm a junior psychology major from Columbia, Mississippi. I had the opportunity of interning in Atlanta at Synapse, and you all hear about it. <laughs> um, I decided to go to Atlanta because, for one, I wanted to expand my knowledge. Not only my knowledge in psychology, but my knowledge in how to approach employers, how to approach other people that I wouldn't consider um, approachable, how to present myself to the world. I also want to go to Atlanta because I want to get a side of, uh, I want to get an experience of counseling with uh, Dr. Cox, and that's exactly what she gave me, an experience with interacting with patients, understanding their um, background stories, and getting to, uh, getting to, getting to experience my uh, future job, hopefully. <laughs> um, I also wanted to get a new perspective on life. I understand that uh, Mississippi, things that we do in Mississippi is not what they do in Atlanta. Things that people do in Atlanta is not the same in Mississippi. And so me going out there and getting uh, something new and different really opened my eyes up to a lot. The last and the last reason why I wanted to go to Atlanta is to network. I met with um, Miss um, Stephanie who also had a counseling degree and I also met with Mrs. Amanda Olmstead Brown, who helped me get my internship. And not only did I meet them, but I also met Dr. Cox, who I know if I needed a recommendation letter, if I wanted to get lunch with her, if I ever go back to Atlanta, that she would do that for me. Um, the most important part about interning at Synapse was the neurofeedback. So what I was in charge of doing was placing sensors on the head and the earlobes while the patient sits in the chair and watches audio and video feedback. And as they're doing that, the, the sensors would measure their brain waves. And essentially, if they kept coming to the sessions, then it would improve the way their brain operates on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, also, I was, uh, also I administered personality and cognitive tests. So we would look at um, how that person is when they're using drugs and how they are when they're not using drugs. And so we would use that data to compare, okay, um, when you're using drugs, you're more manipulative. And when you're not, you're more caring. And so we would use that to get them to see that not only are you affecting your life, but you're affecting your loved one's life as well. I was also in charge of uh, group therapy. So we would get together on Wednesdays. Everybody, all of our patients would get together on Wednesdays. And sometimes we focus on childhood because a lot of the time, things that they're addicted to the things that they're going to was because of what they went through when they were a child. We will sometimes go over, okay, how do you think this makes your daughter feel? How do you think this makes um, your mother feel? Um, and so essentially just get them to talk about their problems and issues that they have with their addictions and uh, how to fix their life. We will also have educational classes. So um, we watched Change Your Brain, Change Your Life videos um, by Dr. Uh, Daniel Amy, he actually has a clinic in Atlanta too, and it basically talks about how you're harming your brain when you use drugs, or um, how you're how how you're harming your brain when you're using drugs, how you can prevent from harming your brain, and if you have harmed your brain, how you can uh, heal it. Last but not least, we did yoga, and uh, it just basically is just sometimes when you're so caught up in okay, I don't need to use, or you have urges, or if, Things are just falling apart in your life. It's good to just be. Um, my personal perspective changed on being open-minded and having responsibilities. I thought having responsibility, responsibilities was just getting up in the morning, but it's so much more when you're six hours away from home with no one in your vibe that you know. Um, you learn that you need to get groceries. You learn that you need to wake up and go to work. You learn that when you make a commitment that you're committed to doing that. 
Um, and then being open-minded, I thought was, you know, make sure you don't judge anyone, but it's more to it. When you actually see people that aren't like you, you actually hear things that you don't really necessarily think. You learn that people are different, things are different, and you're in a different space than what you're used to. Um, after talking with Dr. Cox and learning about private practice and PhDs, I've learned that I do still want to get a PhD. However, I may not get a PhD in clinical psych because after talking with her, she told me that she got her PhD in counseling because that's the area she kind of wanted to go into. So I may get a PhD in counseling instead of clinical psych and hopefully um, talk with and work with young teens and adults who are struggling with their mental disorders as well. And that concludes my presentation. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rachel Long. I'm a junior IMC major, and I'm about to tell you about my experience in New York. So I chose New York, if I'm being completely honest, because of the movies. Um, <laughs> growing up as a girl, you honestly watch a lot of chick flicks that center around um, this metropolitan city, and I fell in love instantly. Um, and New York has always kind of been in the back of my mind as a place that I would like to live post-graduation, um, but I didn't really think of it as an opportunity to um, be a place where I'd live during school. Um, and so with the internship experience, I was able to do that. Um, New York also is just a huge melting pot, <laughs> it really is. Um, so many different people, cultures, um, and styles um, from a fashion perspective and so I was so thankful to experience that this summer. Um, I had the privilege of interning at a PR and marketing agency called Jonesworks. Um, they specialize with elite clients um, such as The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> Tom Brady, um, and even lifestyle brands like Ocean Spray, everybody's favorite cranberry juice. Um, and so I had the privilege of working alongside the marketing and social media director, um, working closely with her managing clients' accounts, our personal accounts, um, doing research on social media trends um, and how to get our clients' products um, and their pictures um, into the public eye to um, basically get people talking about them. Um, and an example of that is um, this summer we had Tom Brady featured on the cover of Men's Health, which was a huge deal. Um, he took up about 12 um, spreads in the magazine, which is a large portion. So a lot of um, photo design and editing went along um, with my internship. I got to actually play a key role in some of the photos that were chosen for the magazine spreads. Um, and so that was an incredible experience and definitely not what I expected as an intern, um, so I'm super thankful for that. Um, and then I also got to play a role in launching The Rock and Boss Waters collaboration. Um, I did a lot of behind the scenes research, um, tons of Excel spreadsheets, and I was able to see that come to fruition um, my last week at Jonesburgs. So what did I learn personally this summer. Um, I learned a lot about myself, about being independent. Um, I grew a lot in my personal and professional um, lives, and I made a lot of friends. Um, New Yorkers are not as mean as they come off. Seriously, they are. Um, I was able to experience so many different things from the Met, um, the U.S. Women's Soccer Team winning the World Championship. They had their parade, and that was incredible. Um, seeing people perform at the Today Show, just things you don't get to do on the everyday. Um, and it was truly a summer just like the movies. Um, so now what? I have a passion for ethical and sustainable fashion um, and basically being a voice for the voiceless um, in those large companies and people that are mistreated by um, large corporations. So the track right now is pre-law. Um, and I would love to go to law school after I graduate um, and try to fight for those rights. Um, but yeah, so that doesn't really tie in completely with PR and marketing, but I learned a lot about people and how to communicate and how to stand in the shoes of other people and see where they're coming from. So thank you so much for listening to me. 
right, good afternoon. My name is Caroline Tankersley, and I am majoring in political science and then minoring in intelligence and security studies, Russian, and international studies. And I went to Washington, D.C. this summer and had the privilege of interning at the Center for International Private Enterprise, site for short. <laughs> okay, so why Washington, D.C.? So obviously, my degrees are very Washington, D.C. focused. A lot of those careers are in Washington, D.C., and I've never been to D.C. And so that was kind of one of the things I wanted to figure out, you know, before I graduate and say, oh, I'm going to move to D.C. and move there and not know if I liked it or not. So I decided to go see if I actually enjoyed living there. And I also really wanted real world work experience. You know, I've had those high school jobs, but I wanted to work somewhere that I was actually interested in to see if I was still interested in it and to see if that's somewhere that I would want to work, you know, after college. So what I did at SIPE, I was a global programs intern, so SIPE has regional teams for basically every region. But for the global programs team, that just means you, the SIPE projects are in more than one country. And so I got to work on a lot of issues like youth and women economic empowerment, the digital economy, and anti-corruption compliance in more than one different country. So that was really interesting. So what I did is I did a bunch of research and writing about policies, regulations, coming through the pop pipelines. Um, I did a lot of writing for the blog. I wrote about um, beneficial ownership for corruption and then women entrepreneurship in the digital economy. So that was really interesting. And then how did my experience in DC change my personal perspective? So I, my, okay, sorry. Um, I really, it really boosted my confidence. So I was extremely nervous going into that real world work experience. Um, and the, the projects I handed in, it really boosted my confidence to say here, this is what I did. Um, it also just helped me in a real world, like solving real world, world problems, you know, learning how to get home, learning how to handle the metro. So, and now what? So I, before my internship, I was extremely intelligence focused. That's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, after my internship, I, you know, got experience in the international development, development world, and I would love to work in either. And so hopefully I'll end up, end up in Washington, D.C. in May. Uh, so my name is Jacob Davis. I'm a senior journalism major at the University of Mississippi, um, and I interned in the office of Congressman Juan Vargas from the California 51st District. Um, so I chose D.C. because it is a uh, bee hub, really, of national and global politics. Um, it is the seat of our democracy, and it has really become the center of um, the Western world now. Um, and with the U.S. being one of the most uh, influential countries in the world. Um, I also, I, I was really drawn to this because I am very interested in politics. I uh, volunteered in 2016 um, at the uh, primaries in California. Um, and it's also just the, the history of the city. Um, I, I love history. Um, and being able to see all of these uh, landmarks and these uh, very important sites that uh, have contributed to the history of our country. Um, these are actually some really incredible pictures that we took um, the second week that I was there. We got to go up on top of the Capitol building. And this is the view of the National Mall from up on top of the Capitol uh, on the outside rotunda. Um, and then entering on the Hill, we did a lot of office work. There was a lot of answering phone calls and emails and replying to constituents. We would greet um, visitors who came into the office. But it was also um, a lot more than that because we got to go uh, more in-depth with the legislative process than a lot of other offices do. Um, we got to go to briefings and hearings. We would write memos for the legislative staff, and we would actually um, be allowed to make legislative suggestions to the staff and work with them um, on what our plan would be going forward. Um, I also worked in a great office because our congressman, Congressman Vargas, was very accessible. We could ask him any question we wanted, um, really any time. Um, and he was very open with us. He talked a lot about his personal life and his family. Um, and he talked about the struggle of you know, not being able to see his family all the time, only going home on weekends. Um, and then on top of that, we also conducted tours for our constituents. So um, I now know the Capitol building kind of inside and out. I've uh, gone through every hallway in there. Um, and I could probably still give my spiel on every room in there uh, because I did so many tours. We ended up doing about two or three tours a week per intern, um, just because you have so many people coming through. There's, uh, over a million people who visit every year um, to visit the Capitol. Um, and then it changed my personal, personal perspectives 
um, because I got to see a lot of other points of view. Um, I got to meet a lot of polarizing figures um, on both sides of the aisle. Um, I actually became friends, so I was working in a Democratic office, but I actually became friends with um, Alex Mooney from West Virginia, who's one of the more conservative uh, representatives in Congress. Um, and I just got to meet people who didn't think the way I did, um, people who agreed with me on some things and not others, and that ability to work with other people um, and find a common goal, because realistically, we're all looking for the same thing, we just have different ways of going about it. Um, and so now my plan is, um, at least in the short term, I wanna work on a Senate campaign in 2020 um, after I graduate. Um, probably volunteer work, because at that point there won't necessarily be uh, paid positions um, on those campaigns. Uh, and I still haven't truly really decided whether I want to go into politics or um, sports journalism, which was my original goal coming in here. Um, my ideal role would be a Keith Olbermann type where he does uh, national news and sports journalism for uh, ESPN. Uh, have, you know, kind of dipping your foot in both pots. Uh, but I think I'm still leaning towards that, uh, that sports journalism at this point. I will start by saying thank you to Outreach. Um, I was a little bit of a different case because I'm the only spring intern that they had this past like spring. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember, but the government did shut down there for a little while. And as I was trying to get to the National Portrait Gallery, which is kind of a national Smithsonian organization, they were shut down as well. So it was really, really touch and go there for two-ish weeks. And I almost didn't make it there, so just thank you to Outreach for being so flexible and helping me get there at all. Um, but I'm Grace Norman, I'm a senior art history major here at the university, and I was at the National Portrait Alley. So as I've kind of mentioned, the Smithsonian is what kind of drew me to DC in the first place. It's a huge organization, so it's not just the one museum. There's I don't even know how many, 20 some odd different Smithsonian Institution museums and places in DC. Um, and I was fortunate enough to apply and get an interview and then eventually a position with the National Portrait Gallery. So as it sounds like the, portion, the National Portrait Gallery is entirely portraits, which I wasn't totally sold on at first, but I learned that kind of you can be very loose and they are very loose with what they call a portrait. Um, but also as kind of an art history major and as somebody who wants to go into the curatorial museum field, um, it's probably exhibitions, this internship was a really good opportunity for me to get that first-hand experience that is really, really crucial for most fields, but definitely art history. So as I was working on, I was brought in to work with Robin Oslison, who's a curator of prints and drawings. And she was working on this one particular exhibition. She's been working on it for probably a year when I had gotten there, and it doesn't go up until 2020. So it's a long process, but I kind of came in right in the middle. That's my little cubicle. And we, I was researching every single day on all of these different women, American women who moved to Paris. So the exhibition is going to be called Brilliant Exiles, Americans in Paris, 1900 to 1939. So it focuses on all of these incredible avant-garde women, artists, poets, writers, uh, performers like Josephine Baker, who all moved to Paris because they could find kind of the liberal freedom that America was lacking at the time. So kind of a day-to-day -day for me was literally just research. I would do, kind of I developed my system. I would check out all of my digital sources that I could find and then head to the library. I spent a lot of time in the Library of Congress as well, which was really, really cool. That was right by my house. Um, so yeah, it was pretty much research and synthesizing and trying to understand why these women had been overlooked in American history and why they, or what they were doing in Paris, who they were talking to, that sort of thing. And then as for personal perspectives, I lived in this beautiful <coughs> old row home. There were nine of us in this home. Um, and we were from different parts of the country. We were, some of us were in politics. I was kind of just in art history. Um, and we were all different opinions and things like that. So it was a real growing experience living with so many people in kind of a small house, a beautiful house, but a small house. Um, and then also being in this huge city. I do not come from a big city. I have never ridden on public transport before. Um, and so I, 
kind of had to learn how to be an adult for kind of the first time. Um, and I did, I think I did pretty well. But, uh, but it was pretty incredible and overwhelmingly an amazing positive experience. And then as that's my, my row home, um, it was like four blocks from the Capitol. So I could literally see the Capitol building from my window. Uh, so I'll definitely never forget that. But, um, but as of now, I plan to hopefully, fingers crossed, graduate in May. I'm working on my senior thesis as well. And then after that, I'm planning to take a year off because I discovered also through this internship how much I love a nine to five job. So I'm planning on finding a job somewhere, hopefully in the museum field. And then after that, a year or so, I'll get hopefully into grad school and then eventually go on to get my PhD in art history as well. So thank you guys so much. They did a really great job of capturing their internship and sharing their journey with us. One of the most rewarding aspects of my position is being able to hear the students make those meaningful connections between their internships and their academic work. We are honored that these students trusted us throughout this process, which would sometimes be difficult as they were sorting out applications, um, revising their resume for the 10th or 12th time, getting a few rejections even before they secured the internship that they um, ended up being placed in. They spent countless hours in the fall and spring of last year preparing for their professional goals, and I think it's safe to say their hard work has paid off. I wish them nothing but continued success this semester and beyond. Thanks again to our partners like the Career Center, um, our outreach marketing team, uh, the internship instructor, instructors, and a division of outreach in helping shape this experience before, during, and after the internships. Feel free to join us for refreshments um, while taking the opportunity to talk to the students individually. We do have um, several of the cohort members um, that didn't present present today, um, so I'm sure they would love to continue expanding their network um, during this time. So we have plenty of refreshments here, um, coffee and water, um, so feel free to hang around and continue to discuss these great opportunities the students have.